Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. It is Monday, May 24th, 2021, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Getting started a couple minutes later than normal, but that's okay. You know what we want to look at today? And I know this is a Monday, so... I don't want this to be confusing. We're just going to kind of do an overview of the two first edition survival guides. Don't mistake these for the Thursday rule explorations that we do, like with the DMG. And in fact, once we've covered all that we want to cover, at least first time through with the Dungeon Master's Guide, we will definitely take a turn at looking at both the Dungeoneer Survival Kit as well as the Wilderness Survival Guide. Well, Dungeoneer Survival Guide, I should say. And, um... I think it's also important to recognize with these that they're still fairly inexpensive to get a hold of. Um, and you are talking about 130 pages each of uh, deep dive rules, if you will. These are easily 260 pages that uh, mostly could have wound up as part of the Dungeon Master's Guide or a Dungeon Master's Guide 2 and certainly a number of rules in here are rules that could have been part of a second player's handbook or you know, all of it into a an additional Unearthed Arcana 2 or something like that. But they were separated as to good little mini systems, subsystems that would work well underground in dungeons or outdoors in the wilderness. And they were put together as uh, if you want more depth in your game kind of books that they'd be useful to have. We will take a, a look at these individually. Let's start with start with this one for sure. Um, now these are these are PDFs that you can get through drive through RPG or the DMs Guild, which is drive through RPG on uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, legacy products, if you will. So they can be had. And in fact, I think they may actually be on sale currently. Let's see if we can shove me over just a little bit. There we go. Uh, they may actually be on sale because I thought, let's have a quick look here, worth, worth knowing, worth grabbing them if they're available, mm -mm -mm -mm. Wizards of the Coast, they had a sale recently on, hmm, you just type in survival because that should get them both now that I'm in the Wizards of the Coast section. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, normally $9.99. Currently available at $5.99. So, worth having. You'll have to decide for yourself. I'll give an overview in this video, and I will 
also start uh, doing rules expl explorations uh, of these books. But by the time I get deep into those, we're going to be well beyond the sale. I'm sure the sale won't continue forever. So, I don't know. At six bucks a piece, I think they're well worth it. If Even if you don't implement these uh, rule for rule uh, specifically and religiously uh, while running the games that you run, just having read them so you have in your mind a methodology for dealing with stuff on the fly is a pretty useful thing and uh, I recommend that just from that standpoint let's look inside the dungeon dungeoneers survival guide a little bit uh, as you can see there's a table of contents in here there's information about special thanks and who worked on this, Douglas Niles, who, by the way, was doing a uh, uh, a uh, Kickstarter for a 5th edition version of this, which is a neat idea. Uh, Jeff Easley did the cover art on that. Lots of other people involved and... We will look at that more specifically when we delve into this book. Well, I suppose that's stuff for today, right? Mike Brialt, editing, Jeff Easley, cover art, interior illustrations, Doug Jaffe, Greg Harper, Jim Rosloff, and Jeff Easley, cartography and diagrams, Dave Sutherland. Carolyn Vanderbilt, Typography, Key Lining, Colleen O'Malley, and Gloria Zopinski. Oop. Uh, I suppose I should adjust this so I can scroll on it easy enough without popping page for page. In the introduction, Douglas Nile, of course, and Mike Brial both have their say. Uh, I love that the, uh, the, yeah, these are PDFs that are available on DriveThruRPG. Uh, you can, I have the originals myself, but you can also, I believe, uh, have them print on demand. Nope, not these ones. These are not available as print-on-demand. They're strictly PDF. You might be able to get them done somewhere, but... <laughs> yeah, if you're going to run more D&D games, and especially old-school stuff, but even if, if it's newer stuff, you can definitely use it. That's Lexfire, that's George and Sarah throwing a few quick questions at me in the chat to answer. Uh, this table of contents here, it has a players section, and then tables, but, and then it says dungeon master section, which is like the second half, and it's split out like that, with its own table of contents, and notice that all of these are um, hyperlinked in the PDF. So if you are also a tablet or laptop DM, you like to have those at the table to make uh, stuff more available for yourself. Uh, these are fantastic for that. I did notice before that the index in the back while very useful, is not hyperlinked. And that can be tough anyway because, you know, you mention a word and it's mentioned in this section, that section, and this section, so you've got multiple listings and you don't know which one to go. So indexes can be tricky to hyperlink anyway. But 
checking out some of what's in it. What is it, it says. Um, yeah, you know what? Overview of the Underdark. Dungeoneer Survival Guide. What is it? Uh, let's see. Well, that link's actually off. So watch out for that. They'll be close. You can, uh, if you actually have uh, Adobe software, you can change links. But if you just have a reader, I don't believe you can. Uh, let's read what this says under Dungeoneer Survival Guide. What is it? Most AD&D game players began their gaming careers with a few hesitant steps into a dark dungeon somewhere in the myriad of gaming universes. Although later adventures took them through vast wildernesses and teeming cities, it is to dungeons that adventurers often long return, long to return. It seems that beneath the earth lurk the most fearsome and thus most exciting foes, the most fabulous treasures, and the most mysterious locales. Yet, after a time, many DMs run out of exciting ideas for dungeon adventures. The monsters all seem to lurch mechanically along in the same manner, and one ten-foot-wide corridor looks pretty much like the next one. Variety and challenge are often missing in these campaigns. This book will change all that. Herein you will uncover vast realms and encounter underground cultures and dungeoneering mechanisms unlike any you have ever experienced. George says uh, eBay hardcover is 22, as high as 200. Hello, PDF. Yeah. Well, you know, if you can, uh, if you can grab them somewhere as uh, hardcovers, uh, sometimes they wind up in thrift shops a little more often than uh, maybe not the player's handbook, but certainly in Monster Manual on the DMG. Not because they were more of them printed; they probably were not. But it is likely that that uh, somebody who has a monster manual or a DMG will hang on to it, and on Earth Arcana for that matter. And, of course, deities and demigods do not survive long in the wild. Everybody wants those, just in case it's the fabled early prince with the no-no pantheons, right? But... Uh, these two survival guides, they pop up fairly often, and they're not as expensive as a lot of the other uh, expansions, if you will, of uh, first edition, beyond the core books. So look for them. It's worth it. They're worth grabbing. Uh, this talks more about uh, different types of underground, under dark, and under underground campaigns. And using the information, this of course is the players section. We'll go back to the table of contents. Look down some of what's in it. Movement rules for underground play. Ability checks. This goes into uh, more specifics about using these checks. And remember, this is only first edition. So, only first edition. So I'm saying this is not inclusive of stuff that came up in second edition it is however some stuff that maybe reared its head in the dragon magazine articles and maybe some stuff they were considering for a later edition right these are after all 86 so we're fairly well along into the history of first edition at this point we're Almost a decade in, if you consider the first release, the Monster Manual, in uh, 76 as the beginning of first edition. So, was this 77? Hmm. Off the top of my head, I'm now confusing myself. But roughly a decade. So, there's been a lot of play. There's been a lot of talk. There have been a lot of... Uh, Hey, how would you do this? Oh, that's not really covered. Well, let's let's look at it in in depth. So, 
definitely figure that uh, there's a lot of information in here that some fairly adept DMs had been discussing for a number of years and ways to uh, work these things. Look at this. Underground environment. Talking about the air supply. How, how is that affected by fire, smoke, poisonous, noxious gases? I mean, we gloss over these things sometimes as DM. Make a saving throw against something uh, for poison. And then you make it or you don't. And what really happens if there's no denotation, it generally kills you. If there are no rules that say it just puts you to sleep or it does a certain amount of damage every 10 minutes until you get fresh air or a healing spell or something along those lines optional rules for hypothermia they talk about cave-ins some um, some base rules for a battle system which uh, eventually became a miniatures wargaming rule system that was tied to first edition and second edition later on um, so if you wanted to do some mass combat, there's a little bit of how to deal with that in here. Uh, these are good rules for doing uh, battle, si battle system stuff underground, which might not have been dealt with in battle system itself. There are rules here for mining, where to mine, excavating, shoring up tunnels, smelting ore, finishing stones hiring uh, hire, hireling loyalty natural hazards unnatural hazards so there's all sorts of extra extra rules improving play now they put this stuff forth as players rules in the first half of this book but let's face it most players really don't even need any of this stuff some of its advice some of it's just giving you ideas. You still have to get, you know, put those ideas through the mill that is the DM's uh, agree agreement that that can uh, that these things can work. So really, these are all DMing rules, and obviously they want to sell. If half of it says it's for players, they're going to sell. A lot more of them than if they're just selling them to DMs anyway. Uh, fighting effectively, speeding play. These are good tips for players. And this one section here, which is like uh, three, four pages specifically for players. So there you go there. Lots of tables, of course. As uh, First Edition D&D &D is famous for all its tables. Crossing with a grapple, broad jumping craftsman proficiencies some of these as i said were proto second edition D, &D rules advanced dungeons and dragons rules non-proficiency penalties for boat use mineral vein direction gemstones or quality underground structure defensive point values all right so there's a lot of stuff in here but let's go and do a quick look, too, at the uh, table of contents in the Dungeon Masters section and have a look before we move on to the Wilderness Survival Guide. Uh, it talks about geography. It talks about domains in three dimensions, how to deal with, uh, wrap your head around the idea of not just having a two-dimensional but using height and depth in your, in your gaming, too. Uh, theories on the nature of the underground, hollow earth theory, the Swiss cheese theory, isolated pockets theory, partial connection theory, the cultures of the underdark. It talks about a lot of the things that were in, that were in, uh, uh, various uh, adventures and series of adventures. So you get the Drow, the Kuatoa, Durgar, the uh, Mind Flayers, Abolith, Darrow, Cloakers. All sorts of creatures that cropped up in, and uh, and it and it goes into their cultures too. It's not just here are the stats that we gave you those stats and those adventures, but more in depth, right? And uh, not 
tied to a specific adventure so you can plant them in your sandbox campaign as a regular feature or, or as controlling a specific area lands of deep earth map of deep earth so you've got uh, a whole bunch of like encounter locations hollowed grounds melting pot combat zone you've got a fungus forest cathedral caverns so lots of ideas so there's uh, not just specific subsystems of rules but also uh, there's a lot here to mine for ideas and ways to refresh your campaign underground adventures campaign considerations challenges for the DM the fine art of juggling designing the adventure and the world you've got world adventures plot and counterplot techniques of story and campaign design running the game help from the players talks about how you can get the players to be a little more invested in your campaigns as you do it mapping your settings there's a whole handful of pages on doing your mapping and making it effective so that is the underground one let's have a quick look uh, George says uh, great detail for an adventure unique challenges for players to manage and navigate absolutely absolutely and so too for the outdoors this wilderness survival guide and again uh, let me just switch over to that so we can scroll down through it uh, you know if you don't like DRM or or a, um, the watermarking on you know you're not gonna want these because they do that automatically but don't let that bother you that's nothing they know who I am you carry around a cell phone come on uh, a lot of the same thanks special appreciation section goes into this Gary Gygax of course Harold Johnson Frank Metzer now Kim Mohan who designed this also thanks Douglas Miles because that came out prior to this one I think they were uh, more or less concurrent but one had to come first so stock number is uh, lower on uh, earlier on the uh, Dungeoneers on the editing Kim Mohan Harold Johnson Frank Menser proofreading and tinkering Mike Brialt again cover art once again the wonderful art of Jeff Easley who's just phenomenal interior illustrations Mark Nelson Jim Holloway Jeff Easley Larry Elmore Valerie Balusek typography again Caroline Carolyn Vanderbilt and also Kim Mohan graphics and key lining once again Gloria Sapinski but you've got Dave Sutherland Roger Raup and Colleen O'Malley in there as well so just a great great group of people all working on this preface and then and once again we've got a table of contents here now it has a dungeon master section this time instead of starting at page 64 it starts at page 103 in a 130 page book so they have less in this that they feel needs to be specifically behind the screen but quite honestly all of it is really again mainly DM stuff in my opinion uh, if players want to get this stuff sure non-weapon proficiencies are in here so you, you know you're talking about choosing skills success and failure of those these are uh, subsystems that were introduced as part of second edition this stuff I don't follow so much because I just play second edition at this point if uh, this was stuff I wanted specifically integrated into my game but I don't want a player side of the game to be bogged down in these rules I think we do role for profession for the DMG and a lot of campaigns but we don't get this in depth uh, what you will like as a DM in this is a overview of wilderness various terrain 
to uh, discuss, whether it's desert, forest, hills, mountains, plains, seacoast, swamp, hierarchy of terrains, bodies of water, climate, uh, dressing for the weather. So it does have some information that you could pass on to players, but you could just mention it and give them a quick uh, two-minute, well, you're going to need these cloaks and uh, extra thick boots, and of course you'll want gloves, and your bedrolls will need to be a lot heavier if you're going to be staying outdoors. Effects of the environment, temperature and wind, all of this good outdoor stuff, damage from heat and cold, encumbrance and movement. If you do deal with that in games, then definitely there are sections here that are worth reading. Even if you just kind of hand wave that stuff in your campaign, having in the back of your mind an idea of how that would work if you wanted to strictly enforce all of it um, gives you a way of hand waving it in the right moments and knowing when it's important to be very specific about what people are carrying and how much somebody jumping over a, a chasm whose uh, backpack is full of coins may not make it a, a five foot jump. They may just be a, a lead balloon falling down below. Um, they don't take their time, unload all that stuff jump across and then use a rope to pass it across or something. Movement across special terrain, climbing, just like this. Surface types, surface conditions, chance of falling goes into that. Using a rope and doing all of that talks about that. So if you're not familiar with uh, actual climbing and rope use, certainly a wonderful thing to, to read up on mountaineering jumping overland movement swimming of course movement in waterborne vehicles flying mounts little section on that which would be very useful if you want to introduce people using griffins hippogriffs even dragons in your games food and water how long can you survive without these things how long can you go what does it do to a person when they have to forgo that for some period of time talks about hunting and fishing, finding water, even in a desert. Camping and campfires is a nice little section, uh, seven pages on, uh, on that and all the things you should know. And these are things we take for granted when uh, players say they're going to make a camp. And that's okay. But if you have all of these details in the back of your mind, when you do take things for granted... You know, you can flavor your uh, narration of these moments with a lot more detail that uh, makes the whole game more immersive. Medicine and first aid, vision and visibility, natural hazards in the wilderness, combat rules for wilderness play, fatigue and exhaustion, mounts and beasts of burden, magic in the wilderness. So it talks about stuff and how that specific. How that specifically relates to wilderness campaigns and wilderness uh, uh, adventures and moments in your regular game. The DM section. And we'll pop over there real quick. Talks about... It does not have its own table of contents for that because it's shorter. But it talks about starting games from scratch. It talks about when you when you should feel like uh, you've got enough stuff that it's finished that you can run your campaign. It talks about scaling from big overviews in the wilderness to smaller views to individual hexes and locations. Um, talks about winging it. There's an appendix on the world of weather. This is a very useful thing if you even if you don't want to get this detailed. Once again. If you've read these sections and thought about the percentages that they apply to certain uh, types of weather in certain climates, then you've got a good idea of how to make it part of your own campaign without allowing it to uh, overshadow everything you do. So there's a lot of information in here on dealing with weather 
in an appendix of uh, five, six pages out of 130, right? Some optional rules on humidity, wind chill, effective temperature, how that all affects, affects uh, weather or uh, players via the weather. Hours of daylight talks about, uh, you know, if, if you're assuming your planet is Earth-like and uh, orbits and whatnot uh, around the sun and with a moon are all the same, then uh, things like that, local winds, tides can all work out as part of uh, the details that you incorporate. And it's got the tables, all the weather tables. In fact, you can uh, print off these tables, not just the weather tables, but the climbing tables and everything else in the back on a number of pages put together. You could print these out and uh, make some extensions to your uh, Dungeon Master's Guide, if you will. Once you've read the section and you know that all you need is the chart to deal with uh, waterborne vehicle characteristics, I pop over, I look at what a kayak is, how long it is, its width, carrying capacity, all of that information, how fast it can move when properly propelled. So, you know, once you have all that information, you're good to go for gaming, having all of those, all of those uh, at your fingertips, all of those uh, tables. So there you go. Uh, I don't recall if they did the same thing with, yep, here, compiled tables, 121. So here's a quick look at. <laughs> they talk about mapping, huh? They're going to teach you how to use stencils and drafting equipment, too. That's what they had. All, that's all they had available. We weren't using computers back then to make extensive maps. But here again, all the compiled tables from within the book. Just a quick view. Talks about doing some, making some uh, isometric maps and learning how to draw. And then you can take these uh, stairways and work them in all right so there's some pages again a nice little index is not hyperlinked but you wouldn't want that or wouldn't be very useful anyway so that is that that is all of those that's what I say so I'm also gonna say let's pop back over here and say Thanks to everybody, those who are in the Twitch stream chat, and thanks to everybody else who checks this out later. I will indeed uh, tell you that we are doing this on Mondays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. in that Twitch channel streaming, and you can join us. And if you do, by all means, follow the Twitch channel and enjoy it. And uh, if you catch up with this on YouTube when we archive it within an hour or so after the show, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up for any videos you watch and enjoy. Click the little bell so you are updated when we do put a new episode up and uh, feel free to make comments got some constructive criticism or you are just interested in joining the conversation please do very much appreciated and i will say this has been the ok Gar grognard show from beautiful lake geneva wisconsin uh, bye bye <laughs>